Well, hello everyone, it's Saturday again, and this week we will paint this beautiful console table. I really like this type of furniture, it fits in each room of your uh, house. Uh, this piece has some issues, as you can see, it has some um, some holes from the wood worm, and the top was uh, really, really damaged. Uh, so first things first, uh, I started by giving this piece a really good cleaning. I assume this uh, top was burned, uh, some candles or something like this because what I'm scrubbing now it's like a mix of melted top coat and uh, candle wax. Uh, I had this piece in my stuff for about one year. I didn't notice any other, uh, let's say like these traces of the wood worms. But to be sure uh, that we won't have any issues, I use uh, this solution again against wood worms. And I gave the entire piece um, to, uh, to coat of this, um, of this stuff. So just uh, read the instruction on the can. I knew that I wanted this top wood, so I started by removing uh, the old finish with a stripper. I'm living in Germany, I'm using a local product, but you can find something like this in any hardware store. After I was done with the stripper, I um, went ahead and I just uh, cleaned the top with some uh, denaturated alcohol and I'm using for this an abrasive pad. This uh, allows me also to remove even more of that pre-existing finish. Now it's time to sand down all the remaining finish. I'm starting with the 80 grit sandpaper and I moved after that to 120. Uh, but later on, because this top was uh, sanded down four times, uh, for my, as my last uh, action I'm using a 240 grit paper just to close all that wood pores. And just a little disclaimer here, I sent it down four times because this was a solid wood top. If you are dealing with veneer, you need to be very, very careful because veneer is very easy to, to damage. After I was done with the sanding, I noticed some very small spots of something like was looking like grease and just to play on the safe part, I decided to apply two coats of a clear primer on the entire piece. When applying primer, you want to apply this as smooth as, as you can because just remember your paint will lay on the on top of the primer and if you will have um, big brush strokes, they will be visible through your paint. So just try to apply it as smooth and brush strokeless as you can. I lightly sand it uh, between the coats of the of the primer just to reduce those brush strokes.
My original idea was to keep this uh, top light color and that's why I decided to apply a coat of um, of a white wash let's call it like this because i'm using i'm not using white color this is burlap from um dixie bear which is a very light beige color uh there are many ways to do um a, a wash uh, a paint wash uh, some of the artists they are using a mix of 50 50 uh, water and paint but I like to do it like this. At the end of the day, you have to choose uh, the, um, the way it fits better to you. As you can see here, I'm applying the paint in any each direction, but at the end, I'm going with a long stroke with the wood grain. Once I was done with applying the paint, I wiped the excess away with a, a dry cloth. For the body of my piece, I chose Colored Greens by Dixie Belle, which is a dark olive color. I was waiting for a right piece to try this color out, and this color is really, really gorgeous. I want a smooth finish on my piece, uh, that's why I'm using a lot of water and as you can see I may apply the paint in any each direction but the last strokes I'm doing with the wood grain just to smooth uh, all those brushes. I prefer to apply the paint in thin coats. Uh, even though Dixie Belle is a self-leveling paint, you may get brush strokes if your paint is too thick. Uh, just remember, it's always better to apply an extra coat uh, than to apply too thick on your piece. I applied three coats for full coverage and I lightly sanded with some 400 grit sandpaper between the coats. Uh, the top was a little bit too light, so I decided to try to dark, uh, darken the color a little bit with some uh, wood stain. So I'm applying now some water-based uh, wood stain in chestnut brown over. I applied uh, the stain with the wood grain uh, working in small uh, sections. After I was done, I wiped away the excess and let it dry. A 
This is the final result but I wasn't happy because I think uh, some of that melted wax went deep into the wood grain so I had some spots where uh, the stain didn't absorb. So I grabbed my, um, my sander and I sanded this down again. So after a couple of other tries, I finally used this Bondex uh, stain and the result is gorgeous. But remember, as I said, I sanded this top four times down. I think that this table was used as a TV stand earlier and it has some holes inside. So I covered them with some tape and then I used some filler to um, close those, uh, those holes. So the filler I'm using, um, I call it Bondo. It can be it it can be used also for cars and uh, stuff like this. It's like a heavy duty filler. Uh, you have two parts. Uh, one is the filler, and the other one it's uh, it's a hardening cream. So you are just mix. I mixing small amount because this product hardens very uh, very fast. Uh, in about maximum 15 minutes, you won't be able to work with this anymore. So you have to move very quick with it. After the filler was dry, I sand it down smooth and I painted that uh, back panel. The wood inside the drawer was in an excellent condition, so I decided to use some uh, Big Mama butter in uh, with the scent uh, Orange Grove by Dixie Belle to rejuvenate the wood. Uh, this stuff it's really amazing and it smells like real oranges. I really love it. I also applied two coats of clear wax by Rustoleum on the entire piece. And I wanted to show you something. As you can see, I have some sharp corners there. And these are the places where you can have some buildups from wax. And it's very important to remove them because they are not looking good. Uh, I went ahead of camera and I used some um, tooth sticks. Uh, and I remove very very gently just be careful do not scratch your uh, paint and this is my gorgeous top I really like it so uh, the stain I was using it's a little bit matte so I decided to apply some ghetto hide of on top of this and before applying getter hide I used uh, some 400 grit sandpaper just to lightly, lightly sand this and to remove uh, any small uh, uh, imperfection another important details about this so the stain I was using was oil based and before applying a water-based product uh, I let it dry for a couple of days but usually it is recommended to let it dry for at least 72 hours before applying a water-based product uh, on top of it I applied two coats of Getter Hide uh, on top of this. Uh, just remember when applying Getter Hide, you don't want to overwork it, lo uh, work in long strokes and let it dry. If you missed one spot, it's not a big deal. Don't come back, uh, just let it dry and you will cover this spot uh, with your second coat.
and this is the final product i really like it this piece would fit in a living room in a bedroom in a bathroom in an entryway everywhere if you also like it please give me some thumbs up leave me a comment below and hit that subscribe button thank you for watching